Amy, how's it looking out there? Where is Amy? We looking okay? Mr. Chairman, there was one neighbor who came to listen about Emerald Grove, so I think we will go ahead and leave that on public hearing like we were discussing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just give me a couple more quick seconds and we'll get started. All right, good evening and welcome to the planning commission meeting for Wednesday, October 4th. I'll go ahead and call for a roll call. Chairman Christopher Sippel. Present. Vice Chairman Brian Anderson. Here. Commissioner Carl Bloomfield. Commissioner David Cavaney. Here. Commissioner Greg Froelich. Here. Commissioner Brian Johns. Here. Commissioner Joshua Ayler. Here. Alternate Commissioner Seth Banda and Alternate Commissioner Mary Harris. Here. Thank you. I'll go ahead and uh, call for approval of the agenda. Vice Chair. Uh, Chair, I motion to approve the agenda with the following uh, modifications. Item 19, GP 17-1003, and item 20, Z17-1006 be moved to the consent agenda. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, we'll do a communication from citizens. At this time, members of the public may comment on matters within the jurisdiction of the town. You have to vote on that. No, we're good. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, item 21, we were hoping to postpone it. Yeah, I was going to do that do when we get to it. Perfect. Awesome. Yep. Okay, great. Um, all right, we'll do communication from citizens, please. At this time, members of the public may comment on matters within the jurisdiction of the town, but not on this agenda. Uh, the commission's response is limited to responding to criticism, asking staff to review a matter, uh, or ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. Is there any citizens here that would like to speak on items not on the agenda? All right, seeing none, thank you. At this time, we'll move to our public hearing consent items. All items listed below are considered consent calendar items and may be approved by a single motion unless removed at the request of the commission for further discussion. Uh, other items may be added to the consent agenda and approved under this motion. The items on the consent agenda for this evening are GP 17-1005 railroad structure or railroad storage, uh, item number 16, which is Z17-1010 railroad storage, um, item number GP 17-1003 San Savino village, and item number 20, which is Z171006. Um, this is a uh, uh, public hearing consent item. Is there anyone that would like to speak or make comments on any of the items that I've mentioned? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and ask for a motion, please. Motion, we approve the consent agenda as read. Motions have been made by Vice Chair Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to our public hearing non-consent items. Non-consent public hearing items will be heard at individual public hearings and will be acted upon by the Commission and Board in a separate motion. Um, Amy, it looks like um, we've, we're all ready to DR 17 dash uh, 1072, and it looks like it has a companion case of UP 17-1017, uh, Emerald Groves Gilbert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to give a brief presentation if you're fine with that. Um, it is a request for a 
a use permit for a congregate living facility and a design review for the full architectural and horizontal improvement package. It is located on Greenfield Road between Warner and Elliott. It is um, an older site that had a home on it. It's zoned SF35. The uh, owner now intends to uh, tear down the homes that exist on the property and construct the care facility. I did provide the findings of fact in there just to re refresh everyone's mind and what we try to remember when we're moving forward with those. And we have to meet all four findings in order to have the approval. Then the site plan, I will note on the site plan, you do see a few little red blobs and those are tied to the um, con con um, conditions of approval. I did add a condition of approval about there are, they wanted to do a flush, uh, no vertical curb um, to make it easier for elderly people to access the facility, but uh, to allow for car stops, we do not allow wheel stops except on ADA spaces, so we are using flower pots that are positioned along the way to help stop cars and provide a spot of color and some interest. And then um, we're also going to, official word is scooch, uh, the uh, <laughs> refuse enclosure just to the west, west a little, so a garbage truck has a little bit straighter shot at pickup. You can see the pots that we were proposing as well as the benches and the gate entry features for the emergency access drive that is required around the full facility. Uh, landscape plan, and one thing I will point out is we did work very diligently with this applicant to um, do something a little different with their uh, emergency access drive. We do have uh, artificial turf in a sort of a center strip going throughout that is still drivable for the uh, all-weather road that's required by by fire, but it also creates a, a walking track for the residents of a really nice clean surface that is, um, you know, all weather and compacted. And then there's benches located along the way, so every so often you can sit down, but you can get your daily exercise in, and there's a lot of colorful trees and shrubs along there for them too. So it was a really nice little feature. Um, you can see that grading and drainage is pretty standard. And then the materials, the applicant did provide a full size set for your elevations up there because the um, Elevations provided in the packet look a little more brown, and I do have the colors and materials here with me, and as you can see, they are gray. So we just wanted to be clear of what was being proposed, and that's why he brought the drawings with you, and um, we do have those for you if you need them. Um, it is a one-story facility, 37 beds. Um, they do have other facilities locally in the area and have done well with them, and um, there's not a high volume of uh, traffic or anything associated with this project with only 37 beds. Um, you can see from the floor plan how the different wings and the rooms are located on the wings and then the, each of the wings looks out on its own little courtyard, which is a really nice feature. And then the lighting plan, you'll notice that we do have a few conditions there. There were two lights on the walls right near the property line, which were not meeting the requirements for the candle foot at the property line, so those are being removed. And then also we ask that the parking lot lights be at um, 3,000 K instead of 4,000 K, which 4,000 you tend to find in a commercial center, 3,000 tends to be more in keeping with residential. And so um, we did ask that they reduce that a little bit so we don't want to blast the neighbors out with the bright lights. So for the findings of fact, we uh, staff believes that we met the findings of facts for the use permit and we do make the recommendation of approval. And then for the um, design review, we did have five, those five additional um, conditions of approval with it, but overall that we feel the applicant has met the intent and has worked well with staff to um, meet all the code requirements. Thank you. Amy, thank you. Um, this is a public hearing, so the applicant has an opportunity to speak at this time. Is the applicant here and would they like to make a brief presentation? As the applicant um, sets up, I would say that if you're wanting to speak on this item, there are yellow cards in the back. Well, we ask that you complete that card and bring it up to the staff here so that we can uh, acknowledge you up at the dais. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Amy suggested that there might be some concerns regarding our mechanical space that we have on the roof. And as you can see, we have sufficient depth in Excuse the Excuse me, Chairman. Can you please have our resident bring the mic down just a bit yep. so we can record your voice? Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Better? Better, yes. As you can see that we have sufficient height in our attic space to reduce any kind of over above the parapet with those mechanical units that we're going to be well below those parapet levels to be 10 to 12 inches lower than that 
for those units that we have placed in that mechanical well. Okay. Are there any questions from? Go ahead, Commissioner. I guess, how, excuse me, thank you. How, how can we see that? I'm, I guess I'm trying to see it. I don't see a, a finished surface on the elevation, and I don't see a depth in the in the elevation view. Is there any? No, there is no section cut that actually would show that. Mm -hmm. But if you look at where that parapet section is, if you look at that the lower parapet where, if you look on elevation to the that top elevation okay. where the notes are, that where the indication for the parapet is, those units are basically where you see the roof and the vertical portion of the parapet would be the height of where those units would be. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, and I see them both. I, I know the, the smaller one on the right, see, on the cutout, is just so low. I, I guess without seeing the, the actual roof line dashed in there, it's hard to see. I think that, that's our concern. I mean, we hear what you're saying. We hear that you're, you're confirming to us that we'll be below it. We're having a hard time believing it with what we're seeing. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. We can provide Amy with that yeah. section okay. there so you that'd don't be great. see that actual section. That'd, that'd be great. That'd be important, I think, for us just to be comfortable that we're not going to see equipment. That's all. Very good. Yeah. Other questions for the applicant? Commissioner Ehler. Um, yeah, I guess a little, I have a, well, I guess point one, I know you and your client came in front of me as a zoning hearing officer, and I just wanted to make clear that they, it was brought up again at that point that it's only emergency access drive. Yes, for through, the fire department. For the fire department only. Yes. And so I know he really wanted to use it for deliveries, but. No, he never intended to do that. He misspoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> and after our meeting, I brought that to his attention that, no, we're not using that for any kind of vehicles other than the fire department. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad he corrected <laughs> himself. Um, so I guess. I'm and looking at the well. I mean, I guess overall, um, architecturally, I'm not the biggest fan of wells. I know we the reasons for them, but um, is there a, a reason why? I mean, you kind of gave a little more height to around the the courtyard area to the other one drops lower. Why not just give it a little more? At least give it the same detailing. The the difference is is because of where the roof comes to the ridge. Mm -hmm. on where the where the courtyard area is that was because of that opening as we went down onto the roof there was no need to keep that parapet level at that height so that we reduced that so that we didn't have that bulky parapet around the uh, courtyard area so so if i'm looking at the east elevation I'm not going to see either one of those walls. No. Coming out, kind of creating a wing outside of the, your nice town. Your, your yeah. east elevation, I like. If you look at the, I believe that's the south elevation, the one in the middle. Well, I'm saying on the east elevation when you turn the corner. Yes. Are you? That's the gonna, front. That's facing east. So the basically the mechanical and the courtyard are behind that. Right. So, but you have little coming down the ridge when you're looking at your south elevation you you have the middle one uh -huh. you have some parapet and our worry is that that parapet will well not for the courtyard but for the other one you'll will grow and now you're going to have like two parapets sticking out on the side when you're looking straight at the the, the main tower i'm not sure i'm following so so when you turn direction on the south elevation, so on the south elevation, you you on your main high roof, you have you have what what do you think that is that like two feet high parapet? The parapet itself. Right. We just put it there as a convenience because of once you get into the courtyard to make that a little more pleasant in mm -hmm. there with that overall elevation. Re reducing it made it look a little strange right with, with the way the interior of that courtyard was developed okay well I, I guess my point is is it, it it just feels a little were you looking to possibly have them both at the same elevation well looking at the same elevation or a whole different style of 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 design instead of a parapet maybe reincorporating it into the roof so you don't have these little two foot parapet stuck 
on to and that's around. That's where the aesthetics of when you look into the courtyard as opposed to that going up and just being a vertical angle. Right. Okay. Um, I guess that's all. And then I, I guess I can ask Amy, is the trash enclosure, the trash enclosure is just sliding over so it's more yes. in line? Because yes. I know that was the other. Well, we were going to try to move it into right. the into the setback, but that was denied. Right. So now we need to move it back so that when the, the, the dump trucks come in, they can have a little bit better access to that. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Cavanaugh. So one more question. I'm not sure I understand uh, what I'm looking at, so you can just help me here. Uh, if we can get you back to the site plan or the, the, the plan view. Let me here. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, right there. No, the, the, the go. I'm sorry, Amy. Go, could you go back to the non-landscaped version? Uh, there, that one. Okay. So along the perimeter path that is for emergency only, there are some some rectangular boxes down the center that almost looks like underground storage piping at first, but but I see equalization pipes going over. What what is that? What is that depicting? Those storage buildings. Those are storage. Like lawn equipment, yard equipment. Oh no no, I mean the. Um, Oh, here, here. here. No, I, think Let me show I you. think that's the artificial turf. Is that what the, hang on. Does yours guys work over there? No. Commissioner Cavney, I believe you're talking about the, uh, the that, those there you right go. There. Those yep. right there. What are those? those are, that's the artificial turf. So I'm going to go back to here, and that's artificial turf that's in the all-weather road that meets the, 75,000 pound fire access requirement, but it's adding a little bit of greenery uh, to the walking path. So if I'm walking down this side, I have little benches to sit on, and then I turn and I walk back the other way and I have benches to sit on. So I create a walking path all the way around so it's just not a fire access road that's just gravel. Got it. <laughs> Perfect, thank you so much. Just when I figured out the button. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions for the applicant at this time? All right, thank, thank you. Uh, this, um, this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone that would like to speak uh, regarding uh, items number 17 and or 18, uh, please complete one of the yellow cards and bring it on up. Is there anyone that wishes to speak at this time? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and um, uh, ask the applicant if they've got anything else you'd like to add or if you're good. Good, okay. Um, I'll go ahead and ask Amy if she wants to come back up and, and ask if there's any questions for staff uh, from anyone on the commission. Commissioner Ehler. Oh, one last, just, I guess because I know the case because it came in front of me. The only other um, question was to no, the north side. You can see, why, why did we not just ang where the goes the landscape uh, gravel in, for on the north side that that has why didn't we just angle that back instead of having this chunk of kind of almost looks like a parking spot that right up uh, right there so why why did we square that out well, it's squared out the way it is, so this car can back up and have a little bit of return, and this car can back up and have a little bit of return. But then it went to the DG because the landscape setback starts here, and we can't have the main parking lot in the landscape setback. Right. No, that, I mean, that is my concern, is actually that you're going to have some movement on that DG. You see that little, rec it creates a diagonal line, and then it kind of rectangles mm -hmm. right there. Why didn't we just take that diagonal line all the way across? to the northern curb that we don't have a curb. The curb goes to here, and so this is a rolls to get up to the, it, it really, we've seen it, it was drawn a couple different ways, and this is where it landed, to be quite honest. So, I mean, we didn't see any reason, we weren't encouraging people in their vehicles to park here accidentally or pull into here. We were trying to create the definition right at the edge and with the ground. Right, and my, my, it's the rectangle that's created, I guess. Wait, where's the laser? Sorry. You mean right up in here? Yeah, that's where. Why, why didn't we just go over to the edge? Honestly, that was never discussed right there, so I don't think anyone ever pointed that out and said, why don't we fix that? Because I could see coming out of that parking spot and kind of turning go north uh, and going into the gravel. Why not just carry the line straight across or at somewhat of an angle? 
I know I'm getting a little bit in the weeds, but I, I was just looking at it because I know the case because we were talking about all this access at one point in time. So, all right. Thank all right. You. That is a little bit in the weeds, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Okay, um, if there's no, is, um, I'll go ahead and bring it back up to the dais. Is there any comments or um, Commissioner Harris? Just one question about the paint colors. Mm -hmm. I know you told us that the rendering that you gave us up here on the paper is the correct mm -hmm. colors. Yeah, and I'm looking at them on the screen too. Um, is the, I'm just curious, what color is the main color that's gonna go on most of the building? Is it the lighter gray or is it the darker gray? It, it would be the lighter color, Commissioner. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Thoughts, comments, anyone like to start? Commissioner Johns? I, I did. Uh, just quickly on the elevations, I was looking at the... Um, oh, I guess the, I didn't. <laughs> it has stone over the top of the stucco. Is the stucco popped out and then the stone is coming? And that might be a question for the owner. Um, I just, I'm, I'm concerned that the, usually you see it the other way around. In this instance, the stone that we have is the same thickness as our stucco, which is typically about an inch and a half. So it's that the, the stone itself is. So your plane's going to be similar. This is the same, yes. Okay, so you're you not going to have stone, out. step back, stucco. Right, at okay. the little, at the banding that we have along those will be projected out. So when there's no stone, you're going to actually have a kind of wainscot of stucco yeah. coming up. Okay, yes. that wouldn't be too bad. So there's a lot of ch little changes in the thing. Yeah. And then the SES cabinet, was that? That's behind walls, aren't they? I just noticed on the elevation. Right where, where is the SES on the? I'm pointing to it with the mouse. It's right in here. Okay, so, it so is that's behind, behind the gates. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, let me try this one more time. Is there any other questions from the commission for the applicant or staff? All right, are we good? Okay, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back up to the dais for a discussion. Who would like to get us started or are, are we good? Okay, see, oh, go ahead, Commissioner Cam Oh, okay. perfect, I'll call for a motion. Okay. On nine, number 17 first. Chairman, thank you. I move to approve the findings of fact and approve DR 17-1072. Motion's been by, uh, made by Commissioner Cavani. Is there a second? Second. Second, by Commissioner Froelich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll call for number 18. Uh, Chairman, I move to make uh, I move to yeah make the findings of fact and approve UP 17-1017. Motion's been made by Commissioner Cavani. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Froelich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That's gonna take us to item number 21. At this time, we wanna continue item number 21, which is the 16-07 wireless communication facility uh, to the December 6th meeting. Uh, so we'll do that. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and move on to administrative items. P Planning Commission uh, minutes, uh, consideration of approval for the minutes for the study session, a regular meeting of September 6th. Is there a motion? I move to approve the meeting minutes September 6th. of September 6th. September 6th. The motion's been made by Commissioner Ayler. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Cavani. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Communications, uh, reports from the chairman and members of the commission on current events. Well, my job is to keep you current. The Diamondback score is currently six to nothing. Diamondbacks are in the lead. Uh, yeah, that's. I was TiVoing that. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> um, and then. Uh, we just want to confirm um, who made the motion for the item 21 for December 6th postponement? Com uh, oh, I didn't. I just, I did. Right. So, so yeah, if you can make. I'll the jump, motion, I'll jump back to that one. Thank you, okay. town attorney, for keeping me uh, in check. So I'll go ahead and make a motion to continue. Uh, item number C16-01, wireless communication facilities to the December 6th meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. Um, we'll go ahead and report from our council liaison is currently out of the country, uh, representing our sister city, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go ahead and go right to our planning service manager on current events. Good evening, chairman and commissioners. Thank you very much for all you do. And uh, we love your input and clarity on your comments. So thank you very much. Um, in council member Peterson's absence, I did want to maybe hit on a couple of things that I think she would have. And I would just encourage you and your families and uh, Gilbert residents to look at the Gilbert Town website because the month of October is very exciting with so many things going on. And these calendared events have all the details, location, time. For instance, some of those great things that we offer in the month of October are we kick off our downtown concert series. Um, there are two in October on the 12th and the 26th. And then on the 13th, there's the Sky Star Watch. If you haven't been to the observatory at the Riparian by the library on Greenfield in Guadalupe, it's really fun. Um, and there's always someone on hand to teach you about the stars. Um, and then also on the 14th here, um, we are also looking for those in the community that would want to volunteer um, as uh, to assist our police. And then there will be a luau on the 21st, a butterfly walk on the 22nd, and um, an art music festival in our downtown on the 27th and 28th. So there's great cultural events in our community and uh, people of all ages love them. Thank you. And didn't our town just uh, recently receive a award, an award? Gosh, I know Bridget would know everything about that. Darn most, no, well, we've always been the second safest, but the most prosperous town in the country, right? And I think it has to do with a lot of work that we do here in, in our, in our, uh, uh, in our area of expertise, if you will. So uh, that was a nice announcement. Uh, with that, uh, I'll go ahead and adjourn our meeting. When I will reopen, so we're gonna run right into our, back into our uh, study session. So I'll reopen the study session at this time. And it looks like we are all the way to item number five. G <laughs> GP. 17-1015 and DR 17-1126. This is all watermark at Gateway Place. And Amy. before we get started on this one, I do have to declare a conflict. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of Planning Commission. Um, 